Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Teens Talk TV. Our topic for today is career and pathways. Um, today, we'll be discussing um, our guests' college experiences, um, their do's and don'ts, um, and any other tips they have. Um, so if you guys can go ahead and introduce yourselves. Sure. Um, my name is Jasmine. And I'm a and um, I actually, I went to Morgan State, graduated in 2012 with um, a bachelor's in biology and few, took a few years off. And then I pursued my master's degree, started working, switched, you know, a couple jobs. And now I work for the federal government um, in the environmental health field. So I've been doing that for almost two years now. And um, I'm, uh, I'm Brandon Speed. Uh, I graduated from Morehouse in 2016, um, had a whole bunch of jobs and internships. And now I actually, in the fall, I'm going to school at Mount Sinai, getting my master's in biomedical sciences, so. Okay, so you both touched on that, um, this question a little bit, but um, what career path did you choose and why? Um, what other majors were you guys considering and how did the one that you got your undergraduate degree and further degrees, why did you continue with that one? You wanna go first, Brian, or you want me to go? <laughs> you can go first. <laughs> okay, so right before I graduated high school, I had no idea what I wanted to major in. I had so many interests. I was thinking about math. I thought about forensic science. I thought about everything. Um, and I took a biology class when I was, so I ended up going to community college first before going to a four year university. And I took a biology 101 class and I fell in love with it. So I was like, this is what I want to study. I know I love biology. It was just so interesting to me. And I had a really, really good professor. So that helped me to just be more comfortable with it. Um, so from there, I just stuck with biology. Um, I didn't love every class, like physics was not my favorite thing at all, but I just love <laughs> biology so much. And I ended up loving organic chemistry too, which surprised me. Um, yep. And from there, um, I figured out, like, I know biology is a very broad um, major and there's so many things that you can do within biology. And I like the public health side of stuff. So from there, um, I ended up getting, um, after I graduated, I was a contractor for some random company. Um, and I was working in like pesticides, so environmental health side, which is not exactly where I wanted to go with it, but I needed a job, right? Um, as most graduates do um, right after finishing. So I did that. And I've kind of been in that field ever since. And I'm actually still working to get out of that and to get onto some other things, but that's how I ended up in like the pesticides part of it. So yeah. Great. Me? You want I'll go? Yeah. That's right. Okay. Um, so I knew um from a young age, my mom was a math major, so it was like you can't go outside until you do the math homework I assign you. So I knew that I was always going to do something in the sciences. And when I was in high school, they were like, yeah, chemical engineers make the most money. So I was like, I'm going to do that. And when I got into college, no one could answer me the question of what chemical engineers actually did. Like, I was like, oh, so what do they do? They're like, oh, yeah, they do things and get from point A to B. And I'm like, that doesn't that doesn't answer my question. So I um, actually went up to a conference at Mount Sinai my junior year and I had met one of the uh, chemistry professors and I was a chemical engineering major at the time. So I knew I needed to eventually take chemistry, but I didn't know who this professor really was at Morehouse. And um, he really broke down everything for me. Like, this is what chemists do. These are the fields that they can go into. And when I got back to school, you know, I started taking Orgo. I started talking to him and I realized that, oh, this is really what I want to do. So I made that switch to um, chemistry. I did an internship at Mount Sinai. I got published while I was working there. When I graduated, I worked at Genentech, which is a great biotech in California. And I never really felt ready to go to grad school yet since I changed my major junior year. So then I worked for two years at Anova Health Systems and the Department of Drug Discovery and Development. And I just realized that organic chemistry going into that medicinal chemistry, making the drugs and everything was really what I wanted to do. 
yeah. Great, that was very in-depth. I appreciated that from both of you. Um, what I heard, first of all, Solange and I are communications majors, so we're hearing you guys say bio and chemo, da da da, da and we're like, no, thank you. But uh, <laughs> we, um, I hear, I heard you both talk about the impact that different professors had on you. I think Brandon, you said that that was a professor that wasn't from an HBCU. But can you guys talk about your HBCU experience and the culture and like Jasmine said, um, she had somebody that, you know, really helped her realize, you know, that this is what she wanted to do. So do you guys have, have any more experiences like that at your HBCUs? I'm going to go first, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was going to say, yeah. So, well, first I'll say is I actually didn't want to go to Morehouse originally. I actually wanted to go to University of Delaware. I wanted to play lacrosse in college. And so, um, funny enough, Morehouse came to my high school and was like, you know, we're doing on-site admissions for all of the guys with 3.5 GPAs or higher. And I was like, I guess I'll go. And then I got a full ride from that interview. And my mom was like, well, you know where you're going. <laughs> so the whole time I was like, oh man, going here, this is not what I want to do. But like while being there, I I think one of the questions we, we had talked about before, like, would you do it again. Yeah, I would 1000% do it again. Because I think being at HBCU, it really prepped me for the real world very quickly versus anything else. Just from, you know, like having everyone being looking like you and having the same mindset of, you know, everyone just elevating is, is one thing that helped push you. But also the professors were very, hands very on and helpful. Hands like I have a lot of my professors some, my, numbers. some of my professors follow me on Instagram so like we're very like you know we can talk very freely about some of the things that you know we have questions on some of the things with let it be you know classes or just real life so um, a lot of my chemistry professors because our program was pretty small it was nine people who graduated with me so a lot of them I talk to every single day so awesome. So Brandon and I have something in common because Morgan State was not on my list at all. They reached out to me because I had such a high GPA and they were like, we'll pay for everything. And I was like, I guess that's where I'm going to go. <laughs> so exactly. exactly. Yeah, I was like, I, I don't need to look anymore. Um, so I accepted that. Um, and I would say I, I would have to agree with a lot of what you said. Um, just being able to share a classroom with people that look like me. Um, and, you know, to see people excelling and just being successful and pursuing, you know, what they want to do was just very motivating for me. So I felt more comfortable. I never considered um, a non-HBCU. I just didn't consider more. So I, would really I don't regret going to an HBCU at all. That's awesome. And so... I'm glad, Brandon, you kind of touched, um, you went against the stereotype. People are always saying, oh, HBCUs don't prepare you for the real world, which I wholeheartedly disagree with. <laughs> but um, that kind of leads me into my next question. Um, during these internships and these jobs that you guys have been in, have you um, felt like you've had to work harder because you are of color and specifically Jasmine, oh, because you're a woman of color, because you know, we don't even need to get into that. But do you guys feel like, you know, you had to work 10 times as hard? And if so, has that been an experience that you've been happy with that has made you succeed even further? Or is that something that's kind of, you know, made it more difficult for you to fit into these new workspaces? Hmm. I would say that it ha I felt both sides of it, actually. Um, I definitely feel like I have to work much harder than non-blacks <laughs> but um i have felt uncomfortable and where you know in my office now i'm a minority the job i had before was it was pretty much all black people so this was like a culture shock to um for me and i'm still adjusting it's almost it's been almost two years and um it's it, it's just it's been it's been difficult it's been a little difficult i haven't felt like anyone has like disrespected me or been like racist or anything but you kind of can see how people talk to you a little differently as opposed to the other, you know, other yes. people. So, yeah. you know, I try to take things personally, um, but it's still something that I'm working through to this day, honestly. So, yeah. Yeah, I, 
yeah, off the back of that, I definitely get that. Like, I've definitely been at internships where, you know, people seem more of micromanaging me, more mm-hmm. like, a, well, did you make sure you did this? You make sure that it's like, yeah, like I did. Yeah. Like, yes, I did. Like, yeah. Right. And and I don't know, like they said, you know, I don't know if it's going to an HBCU or, you know, being a person of color. But mm-hmm. I, I think that it, it's kind of sticking it to them when you do all of those things before they even ask. So, like, mm-hmm. Push like right. going above and beyond. Yeah. Going above and beyond is great just because you know you want to push yourself forward, but yeah. it also gives you that great feeling of like, you know, you think that I can't do this, but I've already done everything and more. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it's right. does, does it feel bad? I mean, the the world is, you know, it's a crazy place. Mm-hmm. But but the things that you can control are the things that you you'll want to do in Excel in. And so why not is how I feel about it. And to these kind of go hand in hand, when you guys find yourselves in these positions or when you were in college, what did you guys do to keep yourself motivated? Um, I have friends who are biochemo majors or whatever, and they are stressed out all the time. So how did you guys work through that in college and even while working? So do you guys do aromatherapy or anything like that? Or do you guys oh have- God. I work out all the time. That like, you have to yeah. have a right. personal life. It cannot just be study, 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 you know, all school, school, school. Like you're still human. You have to have some sort of outlet that brings you joy. Otherwise you will go crazy. And you'll stress yourself out. I mean, you'll have stressful moments with finals and um, presentations or whatever you have to prepare for, but you still have to find something that makes you happy aside from the schoolwork. I think you definitely need to separate that. So Exactly. Yeah. So, like, honestly, every chance I had, I did something else. Like, so I played <laughs> lacrosse in college. So mm-hmm. when I finished homework, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to practice. Like, even if we didn't have practice that day or I would stay longer at practice, that way I just know, like, okay, this is – my sanctuary. Right. And then when I go back home, I know I have to like get to studying mm-hmm. and everything. Gotcha. So, um, which one do I ask next? So what major challenges did you guys face? Um, so I know Morehouse is not in Maryland. So did you have any homesickness going on? Was that a major challenge? Um, even, you know, being still in Maryland, did you have any, you know, homesickness, um, issues with friends? Like what were some really major challenges that you encountered even like socially during your higher education experience? For me, so yeah, Morgan is like up the street, right? I didn't have, I wasn't homesick at all. Um, I would say what major challenge did I have? For me, since I was on that scholarship, I had to ensure that I was finished at a certain time. Otherwise, I would have to come out of pocket <laughs> with all of the, you know, thousands of dollars. I was like, I don't have any money. So I felt like I had to kind of have a, a heavier um, course load just to finish at a certain time. Um, so I wouldn't have those financial obligations. So that was a little bit stressful. I, I mean, one semester, I took like seven courses. That was so hard. But thankfully, I did not work while I was at Morgan. So I had all the free time to study and dedicate, you know, to my academics. So that was that was probably it for me. Yeah. Um, did I have any? I mean, so none of them I felt like were big issues. I mean, so I played lacrosse in college, which took up a lot of my time being the president of that club. Um, same thing. I was on a scholarship where we had to do 10 hours of research every week. So depending on like if you couldn't work one day, you couldn't work another day, you still had to get those 10 hours in one of those days. So, you know, just with practice and then the lab and stuff, a lot of my time was really thinned out when it came to, um, you know, studying and stuff. But, you know, I think I think that's where the adjustment like kind of prepares you for the real life is like, you know, things happen. You know, no matter what, like you're still going to have to be in class. You're still going to have to turn these assignments in. So, you know, you just kind of work around it. And like one thing I learned for me is that if I leave campus, it's like, oh, I don't want to go back to campus, you know, so stay on campus, get as much work done before I have to leave, before I do anything else. And being homesick, um, I have family that's in Georgia, so I would just go to their house. And my mom called me every other day, so. I still felt like I was at home. <laughs> yeah. 
Although uh, you guys were both um, like pretty headstrong in what you wanted to do, you knew that you were interested in the sciences and whatnot. Was there ever a time where you considered changing your major or what you were studying? Cause you got like so frustrated with it or you're like, this is too much or anything like that? Not for me. I can't, I, once I stuck with biology, I was like, okay, I know I have to, there's gonna be courses that I'm not gonna like, but overall I actually enjoyed my journey. And I, yeah, I don't think I wanted to change it ever after that at all. So yeah, same. I mean, like other than the <clears throat> the changing from chemical engineering to chemistry, I mean, in in like I said before, that was more just of not knowing. Like you know, I I don't like going into something where I kind of don't know where I'm gonna be <laughs> after. And so when no one could answer me that question and I knew that I liked chemistry, you know, and then I took orgo and that's where it kind of solidified it for me. But um, I was, I'm also definitely a, if it doesn't have to do with my major, I kind of didn't care either. So <laughs> major <laughs> courses I was always ready for, but when it was like, oh, uh, you have to take yeah. history of art, oh I said. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Definitely felt that on a different level. <laughs> um, so as STEM majors, um, what would you guys tell, say, um, in college, in incoming college freshmen, what advice would you give to make their experience go a little bit smoother than yours went? Not saying that it was bumpy, but you know, all about helping out the oh. next people in line. Hmm. Um, what I would say is, I guess, three things. One, do as many problem sets as you can, not depending on if they give them to you, just do as many as you can, because that way it's just burned into your mind. It's at least, especially for chemistry, a lot of it is, you know, mechanisms, a lot of it is, you know, balancing equations. So that's just stuff. If you just do it, then you know it. Um, second is make sure you get a really good study group. I was gonna like, say yeah, like make um, sure you get a really good study group because yeah. like people who like to push each other, it's like, cause with, especially I know with chemistry, I know with biology, sometimes it's like, there's one answer that's better. And so you could just be mm -hmm. like, yeah, well that's the right. And they're like, yeah, but this one's better. And it's like, but it's like, but you know, if you guys pushed each other for real, then you would have, you know, known that. And then the last thing is just, you know, be as ambitious with internships as possible, because depending on where you go, your school probably doesn't have a lot of, you know, research stuff. And if you want to go into biology, chemistry, physics, you want to go and get those internships that can help you and prepare you for the real world because the classes are great, but when you don't have that real world experience, it's gonna hit you like a Mack truck. I would say um, create, try to create a solid relationship with your professor because they know stuff that you don't know. <laughs> and, um, they also have great advice, resources, whatever. You just never know. Um, I, you know, I would I would go to office hours even when I really didn't need help just to talk to them. It yes, helped. yes, I would. Mm -hmm. like, just to sit in the have, room. Yes, if you talk to them, they, you know, they're more likely to help you with extra stuff. You just never know. So I was right. like, afraid to form a relationship with your professors. Sure. Yeah, or give you that little push at the end of the semester. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> your name, you know, um, you talk about recommendations and, and all that stuff later on down the line. It totally helps. Yeah. I'm saying like I had this one professor for our physical chemistry class, which is known as like the class that changes people's chemistries majors, like changes them out. And he gave us the textbook and I didn't understand something in the book. And then I read who wrote the textbook and it was also him. So I said, oh, so I'm not going to understand anything that he talks about. <laughs> So I went to his office hours as much as possible mm -hmm. just so I could just figure out who he was as a person. Mm -hmm. And so when questions would come up and he'd be like, yeah, because Brandon, I remember we talked about that or like, hey, this is how I would do it. And I'm like, OK, thank you. That's what I needed. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of how I got through that class. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So. All righty. So um, after graduating, um, what has life been like? How was um 
very curious, even though I'm just starting my second year. How is the job searching process, the intern, like how is that as stressful as I think it's going to be? Okay, tell me about that a little bit. For me, my first job after I finished, I worked at Macy's. It's not, it was not glamorous at all. Yeah, I worked at I TJ Maxx. Long hours and I did not get paid. Like, <laughs> I was like, I didn't went to school, did all of this, and this is my first job. I would say, do not, not that it's, it's not, I wouldn't say it's impossible, but for me, I did not have my dream job or, you know, I didn't, I didn't jump right into my career right after I graduated. I kind of had, I had to just kind of dig my feet in really, you know, so. I would say don't expect to just, you know, land exactly where you think you want to be. You do have to work for it. You do have to gain. And, and the thing about like even landing a job that you don't want to work, there are you got to think about what skills you can gain from those experiences that can be transferable. Um, that's been the most important thing that I've learned over the last almost 10 years. So, yeah, it's 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 interesting. And finding a job is not easy. That's why networking is very, very important. Yeah. The two things the two things that I learned in college or coming out and trying to find a job, it's it's really about who you know and get the degree for the thing that you want to do. Because I know there's a lot of people who are in school getting their PhD just because like that was the track that they were on and they realized they hated it and they, you know, leave, get their masters and then they have their dream job. So don't push all the way if you don't want to, if it's not for the thing that you want to do. But I will say coming right out, yeah, it's going to be hard. Like as you, like, like I said, I worked at TJ Maxx for about half a year coming out just looking for a lab because you're, you're always going to get stuck in that conundrum of you have research experience or you have experience, but you don't have the degree or you have the degree and you don't have enough experience. So you're always going to be in the middle just having a bachelor's. So if you find the perfect job, that's great. But it's back to having those internships where you can get as much experience during school. So when you come out, they're like, all right, you already come with this much because coming out with just the bachelor's, if that's, if you find the job that you want that's perfect for you, that's great. But, you know, if you can keep on pushing, maybe get a master's or if you want to get a Ph.D., I'll tell you right now, you get one of those, you get a job <laughs> in 12 seconds. <laughs> so, yeah. Gotcha. More is more. Yeah. Definitely making me second guess some things. But this is what this talk is for. So that's. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, no right, there's no one way to do it, though. You know? Yeah. So. There is, yeah. Um, and you guys are kind of touching on it a little bit, but what is one piece of advice you wish that like someone told you before entering adulthood? Um, I am guilty um, of not wanting to listen to the things that my parents tell me, even though they're really great ideas, just because of who they're coming from. I tend to be like, I don't really want to take advice from you. So um, what do you wish that you knew? Um, well, the one thing, oh, go ahead. I wish that I did not compare myself to my peers and my friends because everyone- 1,000%. I beat myself up so badly for for, a, for quite a while after I graduated, um, thinking like, did I do something wrong? I should have done this, I should have done that. But your path is your path. So, you know, don't compare yourself to other people. Everything, things can look glamorous on the outside, but you never really know, you know, what they're doing to get to where they are. And you may not want to be in their shoes, you know, if you know exactly what is actually going on. So create your own path, create your own life. That's what I would yeah. say. It's, it's exactly what like, and I agree, like anytime I hear something from my parents, it goes in one ear and out the other, but it's, it's exactly what they say by like, you know, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Cause like, like my dad told me and in college, he was like, look, the life expectancy is like pretty good. Like, you know, we're living for a, a long time now. So if you have a plan, you have a lot of time to get it done, you know? So definitely still work towards it as much as you can. But, you know, sometimes there are things that you have to do before you do the things that you want to do. So just as you said, when you make that path, just because things don't go the right way doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. 
Right. And when you're when you're younger, like you're always like, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna do this and da 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 da. And then one thing doesn't happen, and then you're like, Oh no, everything's mm-hmm. off track. It's not off track. Mm-hmm. It just got pushed back a few months, maybe, but it's not off right. track. You right. know, not 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 yet. Just you know, that's all. Not yeah. never. Just not exactly. right now. <laughs> so so like when they when they say you really. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Oh, oh, yeah. I was saying, but when your parents really say, like, like not like you don't know, like, unfortunately, they're absolutely right. Oh, I thought I knew. You're really, like, you really, like, you really. I ain't know nothing. I'm telling I you, I was really like, yeah, I, I was like, yeah, I got it. Like, oh, I'm good. No. And then things happen, and I go, how did, <laughs> how did that even happen? Right. <laughs> I didn't even account for that. Yeah. Now I get it. Years later, I, I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Thank you for that. I needed that, especially during this quarantine. I definitely needed that one. Yeah. So, um, Solange, do you have any more questions for them? I don't. They just opened my eyes to a lot. Um, I didn't even have questions, but just hearing the stories, I think, is enough from science majors and just their perspectives and their outlook. I'm like, okay, yeah, definitely rethinking my entire existence right now. But it's a little different. Um, no worries. No worries at all. Um, but I will ask about going back to get the master's, how you guys said, that's like automatically guaranteed. Like I get why you said that. Um, but other than that, like what are the other benefits that you think or what made you decide to go back and get another degree? Initially, I felt like, well, if I get another degree, then maybe I can get a better job. Maybe I'll be more marketable. Um, that was my initial thought. And the funny thing is, is every other job that I've gotten has been based off of my bachelor's degree in biology. Like having a master's is cool. Um, mm-hmm. but that's why I'm still pursuing exactly where I want to be. I'm not like, I'm not doing that. like my job is great. You know, I, I get paid well, but I'm not doing what I absolutely want, like love to do yet. So I'm still, pers- I'm still exactly. facing that. So I'm not going to yeah. stop at all. But um I just, I really love public health. So I was like, you know what? That's what I want to do. I did my research on it and I decided to pursue that and I did it. And I loved every single class that I took and I, I like, I really enjoyed it. So, yeah. Yeah. And for me, mine was a combination of things. Like I'm a big dreamer. So like when I was in middle school, I was like, oh, I'm going to be a doctor. And then like, like shadowed a, like a, actual doctor doing a surgery and said that's way too much blood so i knew i still wanted to be some type of doctor so getting my phd is something i want to do but um when i went to mount sinai i think that was really the big eye opener for me was that mount sinai is in the middle of harlem and there's only three phd professors of color there three and i was like that's insane especially coming from Morehouse, where everyone that's a professor down there is, you know, a PhD of color. So I'm like, well, why not? Like, why not try to, you know, be that, you know? And so when about talking about, like, as you go through, and as I said before, like shooting for the degree that, you know, will get you the job that you want. I worked at Genentech, which is the number one biotech in America. And it was so much fun just being an intern. Like they had parties every other Friday, people were drinking beer and then going into the lab and doing something like, like who, this is a turn up. This isn't a job. <laughs> and, and so when I asked for my internship to get extended, they told me no. And I said, why? And they said, like, look, like America's cool, but like, we're not the best in school. So if you want to work here, you need to have a PhD. And that's the only way you'll be able to come back. And so I said, well, dang, if that's how people view it, then it has kind of put the fuel in the fire yeah. in me as like, well, this is the job I want. And there aren't people that look like me here. So if I can get the job I want and get in, I can be inspiration for everybody else that they can do everything. So it just goes back to the thing like, well, if you if you think you can do it, why not? We got the time. <laughs> we got the time. <laughs> yeah, so why not? Absolutely. It, it just opens the most doors, I think, is that if you want the door for you to be open for the do the thing that you want to do, then go get the degree that will open that door. And that's it. Right. Okay. 
Yeah, I was going to say, um, my parents are, um, let's say, about midlife, and they always talk about, um, I want to go back to school and do this, and I want to go back to school and do that. And I'm like, I'm not even done with undergraduate, and I don't want to do it anymore, but hearing all, he, you guys are, you know, like I said, I don't listen to my parents. Hearing you guys say that definitely helps in making me, you know, rethink some things. So I appreciate that. So I have a question for you guys. So ja Jasmine, can you talk a little bit more about your community college experience? Because oh, yeah. I think that's one, I know for my niece, for example, she's gonna go to community college first because the whole mm -hmm. thing, she thought about the four year, but you know, the whole thing with organizing money and getting prepared. Yeah. And so she's gonna go to the community college first, which I think is excellent, especially mm -hmm. in her case and for her personality. So can you talk a little bit more about that experience? I felt like it was perfect for me because I know how I learn. I need a smaller class size. I cannot, I don't want to feel like I'm one out of 300. I just, I can't learn that way. So I knew that going to community college was just kind of giving me, you know, just some time to one, because like I said, I didn't know what I wanted to major in. It gave me a little chance to just kind of try different classes and see what I was interested in. Um, and it was close to home. I just wasn't, I didn't want to go too far. And um, yeah, it was it was kind of like a trial and error kind of thing. <laughs> Cause I took a couple courses and I was like, I like this. I definitely don't like that. So it just helped me to discover where I ultimately ended up. So I think it's great. I really do. Community mm -hmm. college is awesome. So. Okay. And then another question for both of you, did either one of you utilize the career center at your school? Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So, so my scholarship, my scholarship was like a research based scholarship. Mm -hmm. So when it came to career stuff, everything came through my scholarship mm -hmm. program. So like when it was, Hey, there's this internship, like that's who emailed me when people were on campus, they are the ones who emailed me. So like conferences, I went with them. So if, I mean, if it wasn't through my scholarship, no, but also, everyone in the sciences kind of all stayed in the same building. Mm -hmm. So like I, there wasn't, I, that office I would say is more just in the science building. So like everyone's just in there. <laughs> and then for your, so how was your social life outside of all of the academics? How was that undergrad and how did it translate after you graduated? So like after undergrad, were you like, oh man, I had such a good social life in undergrad. <laughs> and so how did that work for you all? So my social life, I have been, I've always been the responsible person. I did have a social life. I definitely was, you know, all about homecoming, went to some of the dances, all of that good stuff. But, I, but before we did anything, I had to make sure that all my stuff was done. Like I had something prepared, like a test or something the next day, I was already studying like before. Like I was just a super organized, responsible person. Um, that's just how I always have been. Um, and I, you know, I ended up developing friendships with like good, solid few young ladies. And you know, a couple of them were no longer friends, but there are some that were still <laughs> Cause that's just life, right? You know, sometimes, you know, things happen. Right. We all over the years, so, so yeah. yeah. I will say that I started out the exact opposite. <laughs> um, not saying I went to every party, but at like again, if there was a chance I could leave my dorm room, oh yeah, now let's make moves. We out. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you definitely get to a point like in school where you're like oh, I hate it here. Not because of your friends, not because of the classes. You just mm -hmm. want to get, like, you're like, no, I can't be in college anymore. <laughs> so your friendships, and that's what, so I started making friends with the people that I was studying with. And because I'm with them all of the time, I definitely still have a lot of friends who I would say like my brothers and a lot of people that like I still talk to every day. But like the people who I studied with, like we got really, really tight. And the people, of course, who I roomed with, but like we got really, really tight. 
just for the fact of like we were grinding every single day like when we had finals we're studying up till 3 a.m every single day going through stuff like that and especially if you had classes with them, like they were your friends and you had classes with them. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah, you, guys, you guys were definitely passing that test. Right. right. Yeah, but, um, but homecoming? Yeah, no. Um, a class didn't exist to me during homecoming week. 4 a.m. We were out like 4 a.m. Oh. Exactly. Exactly. But I will say, like I said, like you said, I did get to that point where I was like, all right, now we got to be responsible, study before, things like that, and get yeah. it done. And when you do good, oh, then we on it. Right. Right. We got to turn up. <laughs> exactly. Now, what about now for your professional? Are you guys in prof any professional organizations? Um, I uh, I crossed Kappa. That's, oh. that's I crossed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, crossed, I crossed Kappa uh, spring 19. Um, but uh, at least chemistry wise, nothing <laughs> yeah, yeah. like i don't know i mean yeah and so I, I don't know i'm i'm doing my research on some organizations though and then any mentors do you have any mentors that you still keep in touch with or are you still looking for your professional mentor i had one but i kind of lost touch with her as i've just grown and you know, matured over the years, but I did have one, especially while I was at PG, and then when I went to um, Morgan, and then after that, I just kind of did my own thing in a sense, so yeah. Do you guys have any mentees? I don't. Brandon, you might, because uh, you have a little brother, so does that count? I mean, I guess, I mean, he's a, he's a math major, he's not a chemistry major, so like, I talked to him about like, life in college and things like that, but when it comes to chemistry, um, I, so when I worked at Anova, I had interns, so I still talk to some of my interns. And so we talk about chemistry, like I, they'll call me and be like, so what's the answer to this? I'm like, that's not how, that, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not just going to give you the answer, <laughs> but, um, but mentors, I have three. So one was a professor at Mount Sinai while I was up there. Um, he's all, he's frat. So, um. And we bonded over that. Um, second was the guy who I worked for at Anova. He was the only black professor all at Anova, and luckily he was just in the thing that I wanted to do. So we really, you know, bonded over that. And him, he kind of took a chance on me coming out of school. Like after going to Genentech, you know, I wasn't doing anything. Like, like I said, I was working at TJ Maxx, and so he was like, "Look, I see that you have the passion. You may not have, you know, all of the experience, but." Like, let's try to get you that experience. So I worked for him for two years, and then that's kind of the thing that springboarded me to getting into grad school. And then the chair of the chemistry department at Morehouse, like, again, I follow him on Instagram. So, <laughs> so like, we'll DM each other about stuff sometimes, but yeah. Great. And then, any, like, one more thing. So anything, <laughs> any recommendations about, I know you guys talked about intern internships. So any, I guess, last thoughts about, because I feel like, so for me, you know, so InReach is an organization that prepares students for college work and life. And we usually work with K through 12. Um, my personal favorite group, I love working with high school students. That's probably like my absolute favorite ninth through 12th grade and early, early college. I like college students too, but the high school students are, are amazing, I think. <laughs> And so in getting them ready, it's almost like here in, you know, Madison, and everybody talk about, well, your parents tell you these things. And, you know, at some point you go, oh, okay, I remember my mom said that. And so when I talk to young people and then my, you know, students that I used to, used to be in my program, you know, it's kind of feel like they're a parent in a way, but I would talk a lot to them about, you know, there's, you can do internships and study abroad. So when my daughter was in college, she actually did study abroad for a semester, but they're like all of these different, there are like all these different things you can do that I don't think they always come up. So when it comes to the internships, you both did internships, yes. right? Jasmine, yeah. Great. So, Great. Right. So the whole thing around the intern, so what would you say to like students listening? I guess even high school students going into college in terms of preparing, like the other things you could do, yes, go to the career center, their internships, you know, you can get a mentor, you can, you know, all of those things. 
I know I'm not a guest, but I kind of have an answer for that. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I, I am an ambassador for Howard, so I give like campus tours. And just being the chatty person that I am, I would ask people like where they're from and what they do. And I ended up meeting, I ended up giving a personal tour for a guy who is like the head of the television networks in Atlanta. So I just think like what I've learned is just like putting yourself like out there, even like, even like on a limb, like, oh, this probably, there's like a 99.9% .9 chance that this might not work, but like doing it anyway was just like, oh, well, if I didn't even say that, then this never, I never would have got that exactly. phone number or that email and things like that. Right. Yeah, yeah it, it, it comes back to who you know. Like a lot of my internships, I got in because I met someone beforehand. Like my mm -hmm. first internship, I was at University of Virginia. And that was because I did a camp when I was in the seventh grade at University of Virginia wow. and just happened to remember the lady's <laughs> name and emailed her while I was at school. Like, hey, like the summer's coming up. I want to get some more experience. And they were like, oh, my God. Yeah, I do remember you. Blah, blah, blah. And so that's how I got there. And another thing is like not only talking on campus, but if you can get a mentor on campus, you can ask them to sponsor you if they have money sponsor you to go to some of these conferences going to a conference yeah. in undergrad is a huge thing because you meet like you're trying to find an internship being at a conference it is literally mm -hmm. like 70 schools who are all asking for kids to come to their conferences so a big one for minorities is abracams you know that's more science related but um you know, I went there, I went there the first year, didn't present. I met someone who then told me to go here for an internship. I did the internship, came back the next year, I presented, and I won on the national stage just because I met people. You know, never needed to do anything, never needed to, you know, take someone's class. I just walked up and said, hi, I'm mm -hmm. interested. Nice. Alrighty, is that all the questions you guys have? I think that's it for me. And you guys have shared all the tips that you guys think you can offer. Um, I think so. I would say be yourself and don't try and fit in to, you know, different groups and all of that. Um, I felt pressure to do that at, at one point. I was like, this just doesn't feel natural. If, you know, some people just don't mesh with it and be very, be very um, aware of your friendships, your personal relationships, all of that. Just protect your energy. Protect your energy. Yeah. The more, the more, <laughs> the more authentic that you are, the easier it's going to be to maneuver mm -hmm. through other things. Right. Or, right. You know, if you're if you're fake in certain situations, it's some situations fun. might come up where you act that way, and you realize that you didn't need to or didn't mean to. Mm -hmm. So just you know, if you're gonna go in and you feel a certain type of way, just be honest. Because at the end of the day, a lot of people respect the honesty more than anything. So, yeah. Do you? Well, that, <laughs> yeah, that was a perfect note to end on. So I want to say thank you guys so much for being here with us today. And now for my little public service announcement, um, for all of you who are watching, please check out inreachinc.org for more information related to this topic. And up to the yes, exactly. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for your time and I will see you guys next time.